eight bedroom main house and a two bedroom guest house for $55 million? F you. Hi, I'm Seth Rogen and I'm about to go on a shopping spree with GQ. Um, do I come out of this with any actual sh I don't think so. Let's pick a vacation. Luxury treehouse on a Rwandan volcano with Jonah Hill? Does it literally come with that? Oh, okay. This is how this is this is you projecting how I would go on vacation. Somehow this luxury Rwandan treehouse did not get Jonah Hill to agree to be a part of people's vacation. It's a villa on the slopes of an eroded extinct volcanic crater. Accommodation, all meals, local drinks, government taxes, is there some rooms? Pretty nice. You know, if I'm making a list of places I wanna go on vacation, is a Rwandan volcano high on the list? Not necessarily. It's not something I'm like myself like manifesting, but now that you throw it out, it sounds nice. Me and Jonah would do great in a jungle together. I'm taking a moment to think, have we been in a jungle together? <laughs> is there a thing I can, we probably been in jungle-like settings with one another. Uh, I would love to go to a jungle with Jonah, especially on the, the cusp of a Rwandan volcano. A luxury one day trip to Antarctica with Jay Baruchel. 14 grand a person, private jet from Cape Town. You got a four by four excursion, you're mountain biking? No, thank you. A picnic with thousand-year-old ice in your cocktail? That's a fucking stretch. If there's a million-year-old rock in your cocktail, ooh. <laughs> um, I don't know if I need to go to Antarctica. Jay, nothing personal. I, I, I would like to go on a vacation with Jay, but I, I don't know if Antarctica's the thing, the thing for me. Construction crane turned hotel in Copenhagen, Denmark with Paul Rudd concierge team to tell you everything you need to know about the crane. Oh, thank God, because I will have a lot of crane-related questions. <laughs> the crane is uh, 1,200 bucks a night around, which is not bad for a crane. Uh, I, I mean, I do, I would like to go to Copenhagen. Do I, do I want to stay in a crane while I'm there? When I think of like Denmark and the architecture, the things available, does a, Abandoned construction crane <laughs> is that the is that the hoogy thing that leaps out at me when I'm thinking of uh, Denmark? No, it's an industrial experience, I guess you would say. If you crave an industrial vacation experience, then a, a crane is for you. Free Spirit Sphere in Qualicum Beach, Canada, with Lauren Miller, my wife, for three hundred seventy-four dollars a night. You know, we wanted to stay in like an orb. <laughs> <laughs> For a while, we got a lot of orbs pinned. It's got two windows that open, it has electric heat. See, the toilet might be the problem. Uh, electric composting toilet outhouse at the base of the sphere. Well, I get Lauren to do that for one night, maybe. She is not like an unconventional toilet situation. She prefers a, a, a normal infrastructural North American toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the reasons I love her. I'm going with the wife's fear. Uh, what kind of asshole doesn't pick that? For Zelda, we're gonna shop for my dog, who is pretty picky, not easy to shop for, but let's see what you guys got. The Taj Mahal doghouse. Uh, we start all custom house, uh, custom dog house design projects with an in-depth consultation with the dog, I assume, followed by, uh, drawings and renderings. It's 40 grand, which is a lot for a dog house that my dog, I'd say, has a 10% chance of using sometimes. You know, this would be lost on my dog. She generally lands on, like, a sweater that's been left on the ground. <laughs> Next thing for Zelda, uh, La Rochelle designer dog bed. 2515 bucks, padded headboard, in case our dogs get it on. Reversible black and white imprinted fabric. This is a fuck bed for dogs. And I don't know, my dog might be too old for this. An A24 dog leash. Proof you can brand anything. 46 bucks, I don't know. That's a lot for what essentially, like, it's a long rope with a hook on the end. Have they even made a dog movie? Make a dog movie before you're getting into dog leashes, A24. I don't need a dog leash that reminds me of the Green Knight. The Ice XL dog collar. <laughs> Cubic zirconia diamonds, ah, already a no. Took over 100 hours to create, I don't know, like, are you bragging about that? My dog weighs a total of like 18 pounds. I think this would not be good for her. I'm going Taj Mahal. And if there was a 1% chance she would uh, 
like this, I would be more than happy to buy it for her. So yeah, I'll take the Taj Mahal doghouse. Let's check out some farm properties, <laughs> finally. There's one thing you think of when you think of me, it's that I probably want to buy a farm property. The Aspen Mary Go Ranch. Eight bedroom main house and a two bedroom guest house for $55 million? First, fuck you. That's insane. Oh, and a two bedroom guest house. Five garage bays, an eight stall barn, and a 13,000 square foot gym. Whoever built this house is an asshole. That's like if like the guy from American Psycho like lived in Aspen. This is what he would build. Portuguese nature preserve, 5,400 square feet, no, 15 acres big, 40,000 square meter park, 11 million, includes a residential house and a pavilion to accommodate events for up to 300 people. This sounds lovely. Have I stepped foot in Portugal ever in my life and did I ever plan to? No, but that does not rule this out. High in the running, Portugal. Farm on a biodiversity site in Chile. 8 million, uh, 400 grand approximately, 100 hectares. I don't know what that is. This place is nice, not my style uh, architecturally, I would say. Ooh, do not like the inside at all. Riverfront farm in Bella Coola, Canada. 1.5 mil, four bed, two bath, as opposed to eight bedrooms for $55 million. I like how they just say Canada. It doesn't say what province it is. Okay, if you're growing on a farm, what kind of, what kind of crops would you grow? <laughs> You'd think I'd say weed, but I wouldn't grow weed. Because I know enough about growing weed to know that you need like a lifetime of knowledge to even begin to grow the type of weed I would be interested in smoking. So I wouldn't bother growing weed. I like animals, I rescue animals on my farm. I'd have dogs, each one with their own Taj Mahal. I'm going Portuguese, I like this place. It looked cool, you know, it'll give me a reason to go to Portugal. Let's shop for some vintage tees. I like vintage, I own some vintage t-shirts. Some just I haven't thrown away since 1993. And due to my own inaction, they've become vintage t-shirts. Wu-Tang Clan cream graphic t-shirt, four grand. That seems like a lot. Well, I, don't, I can't fathom why that Wu-Tang Clan t-shirt is $4,000. I mean, it's just a, like, uh, is this, I don't get it. It's made with like old dirty bastards blood or some shit like that. Pink Floyd The Wall jumbo print, 500 bucks. Pretty cool shirt, pretty cool shirt. Kurt Cobain graphic print tree. Just straight up Kurt Cobain shirt. It's not a Nirvana shirt, it's just a Kurt Cobain shirt. Journal of the back, too. Ooh, wow, with his journal, this is not official. I can't imagine Kurt Cobain uh, condoned that, but maybe he did. A 1992 Miles Davis t-shirt. The height of Miles Davis's uh, popularity. Uh, 250 bucks. I generally, personally gravitate toward these band t-shirts that like have some sort of imagery that I'm familiar with. It, it was like tied to the album release or something like that, or tied to a certain song. Like that thing, does this Wu-Tang Cream t-shirt even say cream anywhere on it? Like I have a Wu-Tang Cream t-shirt and on the back it says, cash rules everything around me, cream. I did not pay $4,000 for it, I'll tell you that. But because this isn't real money and I like Wu-Tang, I'll go with the $4,000 Wu-Tang cream t-shirt. It's the one I'm most likely to wear, if I'm being honest. Pottery tools, let's shop for some pottery tools. I got a lot of pottery tools. I got into pottery because my wife had done pottery, Lauren. She knew I liked uh, hobbies. She always uh, implored me to take a pottery lesson and uh, finally we did and I really, uh, and I really loved it. Uh, Sculpey Clay from Michaels, $29.99. Well, is this like female, I guess, kind of? Uh, you, it's like a creative clay you bake. I don't think this is my thing, necessarily. A Fredrickson kiln. Multi-zone digital controller, solid state relays, insulating refractory. I don't know what that means. But uh, this is a nice looking kiln. I can tell you just from looking at this thing. This is a big ass kiln, 15 fucking thousand dollars. I can tell you from the owner of a kiln that's probably around half this size. They're really heavy and you gotta kind of be careful with them because the, uh, the the bricks that, the, the, that make them up are fragile. You gotta get a new power source. You probably need to get a gas line installed if it's a gas one, which I think it is. You know, so plus installation. You're looking at a solid 17,000 bucks for this thing. True Flow Magic Crystal Glazes, set of 12 for 233 bucks. Uh, I don't need these necessarily. The sink, I actually had one of these once. I've since got an actual sink installed. 
That's like one of the hardest things. This is gonna be boring, what I'm about to say. It's a disclaimer, but the cleaning up when you do pottery is one of the most difficult things. You don't wanna ruin your uh, plumbing with all the clay. And this is a good alternative if you uh, cannot afford to get an actual sink installed. But 2,400 bucks, like I would call a plumber and see how much it gets uh, cost to get an actual sink with a clay trap installed. Just call your plumber, call your plumber. I'm the grandson of a plumber. So that, that's my go-to. Uh, I'll take the kiln, Fredrickson kiln. It'll go nice in my uh, Portuguese uh, eco farm or whatever the fuck. Let's shop for ashtrays. All right, mid-century modern vintage standing ash. Uh, st uh, yeah, copper ashtray, 16 grand. Carl Albach, a fucking heavyweight in the mid-century modern ashtray game. This is a beautiful ashtray. I don't know what kind of condition it's in. It says very good, but the copper tray has some signs of use. So you know what, if you're using your ashtrays, that's uh, about to happen. Standing ashtrays are great, because yeah, if you don't if you don't have a table or something to put it on, it, it, it itself does that for you. <laughs> and this is a beautiful one. And if you got 16 grand uh, burning a hole in your pocket, then uh, this is a good ashtray for you. And it might remain uh, valuable, you know? Again, Carl Albach. Stussy Dice Ashtray, no. I did own a Stussy Dice t-shirt when I was younger, so I think there, there's something nostalgic about it, but I do not need this ashtray. Hermes Mosaic Ashtray, $800. Uh, I actually own a few Hermes ashtrays. The thing about Hermes is they kept making ashtrays, they might even still make them. Like, they're not necessarily old or like rare. They, they, they pumped out a lot of these things and they're lovely, but uh, I don't know if you bought this if you feel like it was worth $800 necessarily. Oh, we have one of the largest private ashtray collections uh, in the world. <laughs> when it comes to like vintage ashtrays, yeah. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Yeah. Ooh, and the houseplant ashtray designed by me, the very reasonable price of $95. Deep notch, saucer, matching vase for flowers. It was an ashtray that uh, filled the need that I just didn't have. Like I want an ashtray I didn't have to clean all the time, but something that wouldn't get ash everywhere and I could walk around with it and something with a notch that was like a perfect little rest. And then I started um, doing ceramics and I started making my own ashtrays and I started making little saucers for them to go and I started making little vases and I would put them on side tables and stuff like that. And people really responded to them and liked them. And there's not a lot of people currently making ashtrays and stuff like that. Me and Hermes, maybe. And it's nice to see that, uh, you know, people don't have to ash in like a mug or like a tin can anymore, um, which is what I was using a lot of the time, you know? The uh, Hermes one is lovely, but I'm going with my own ashtray for shameless self-promotional purposes. And it's only around $16,000 less than the Carl Albach. And since I'm buying a lot of Taj Mahals to fill my ranch, I mean, I gotta buy my own ashtray, don't I? I'd be a real asshole not to. All right, thanks for watching me pretend to spend $11,373,566. All in all, I'm, I made out like a bandit. So uh, thanks for having me.